Welcome back YouTube, I am Turnkey, your host. In this video, I will cover the lore for Finland and the Northern Flank from the Resurgence Supplement, and the forces of Italy from the Defiance Supplement, and in the following video, I will cover the Lord of the Black Pit short story from the Defiance Supplement. Please like and subscribe for more Conflict 47 lore. During the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Finland sides with Germany as allies of necessity. Combined German and Finnish forces work to recapture territory lost to the Soviets in the Winter War. As the war progresses and the Germans take losses in Europe, the Finns find themselves in a precarious position. Stuck between three superpowers as the USA and Russia pressure Finland to distance itself from Germany. By September 1944, Finland decides to enter a ceasefire with Russia. The Soviet expectation of a bloody coup against German forces are not met as the bulk of the German army is allowed to retreat north into Norway without heavy losses. Meanwhile, Finland surrenders military equipment looted from the Winter War back to the Soviets. Retreating German forces are bolstered by Finnish volunteers. After the retreat, Finnish national movements recruit anti-Russian youths for training with experienced German army units in Norway. A guerrilla attack on the Soviet embassy resulting in the death of the ambassador to Finland is the last straw for the Soviets. On September 12, 1945, the Soviet Union invades Finland, again, nearly six years after the beginning of the Winter War. But this time, the well-organized and trained Soviet forces brush aside the Finnish defenders and formal hostilities end in October. Active resistance movements operate all across the country supported by the German army as the stream of volunteers and refugees moving into Norway are organized into a de facto Finnish army. Finland once again finds itself in a marriage of convenience with the Germans. In March 1946, German forces increased their presence in Finland. Elite light infantry units made up of veterans were to operate with the resistance forces. Soviet forces in the north find themselves isolated to small safe zones as convoys and patrols are ambushed. A wildly successful operation in April sees coordinated attacks upon three major rail centers, seizing Soviet supplies. Soviet reprisals are harsh, but leave the Soviets fighting the entire population of Finland. With no hope of further reinforcement or supply, Soviet forces in major cities are forced to defend strong points as they are surrounded. The arrival of the harsh winter of 1946 and 47 is not enough to stop hostilities as winter-hardened Finnish resistance units launch offensives in December. Centers of communications, fuel stores, and generators are targeted leaving the Soviet forces at the mercy of the elements. Many of the remaining strongholds are quickly abandoned due to lack of heating. The north is lost entirely as Soviet forces hastily retreat south in desperate breakout actions. Many do not make it south. Meanwhile in Norway, German forces continue to invest heavily in their Finnish allies. Heavy infantry armor is not well received by the resistance veterans who prefer a more mobile form of warfare. Panzer mechs are supplied to the Finns in large numbers. Pro-German Finns are transferred to Schreckwolfen and Knockjäger units, while patriotic anti-Russian Finns largely shun the use of such horrors. Forces in Norway quickly move to occupy the north of Finland. As the winter breaks, fresh Soviet mechanized columns move to relieve the remaining Soviet forces in Finland. They're met with ambush and determined resistance. Repeated assaults and weight of numbers eventually drive the Finns north, but pursuing Soviet forces are often met with German traps and fortified positions. Any hope of relieving Soviet forces in the north are crushed as they realize the scope of the German and Finnish defense of Finland. This concludes the lore for Finland. Please comment below with your favorite partisan forces in Conflict 47. Now please enjoy the lore for Italy from the Defiance Supplement. Italy maintains a perilous position in the war. Mussolini continues to support his German counterpart, while the Kingdom of Italy works to secure a favorable position with the Allied powers. 
Having performed poorly in France and North Africa, the country reels from a number of embarrassing military losses. The nation lacks the industry to produce modern tanks and fighting vehicles in quantities, and those products often underperform in the face of a coherent enemy. By 1943, Italian forces have been crushed in the east and were forced to withdraw from North Africa to fortify Sicily and Sardinia. The German army advisors had a strong interest in keeping Italy in the war in any fashion. They facilitated the rearming of army survivors and volunteers in northern Italy and trained them for the defense of the Apennine mountain range. The loss of Italy as a combatant would expose an undefended southern flank leading into vital German territory. In Operation Husky, Allied forces once again drove Italian forces back during the invasion of Sicily. Narrowly avoiding a total rout, the bulk of the Italian and German forces were able to successfully withdraw to the mainland to fight once again. With the Allied invasion of the Italian mainland, the rule of Mussolini collapsed. King Victor Emmanuel III seized power and the police acted quickly to arrest Mussolini, having been impatiently waiting for an excuse to do such. The new government capitulated to the Allied powers, joining the war effort. Newly freed prisoners of war swelled the Allied ranks. German forces launched a successful effort to rescue Mussolini and organized the movement of loyal army units and POWs north to defend the German-occupied territory of the newly established puppet state, the Italian Social Republic. Partisan skirmishes became common as territory and allegiances shifted. American interest in the Italian front was initially low, but the deployment of Rift Tech by the German-backed Italian Social Republic quickly escalated the situation. It became necessary to deploy Rift Tech to the Allied-backed Emmanuel government as a stopgap measure meant to stem the flow of Allied manpower to the theater so they could be redeployed to the impending French front. German-backed Italian Social Republic forces dug in across the peninsula in the north as Allied forces trained and equipped their new Italian allies. Allied forces were determined to drive north into the heart of Europe, but lacked the resupply of necessary heavy equipment or the ability to replenish their losses. They therefore advanced slowly and cautiously, unwilling to commit to prolonged or costly engagements. The heavy winter of 1946 and 47 does little to help the Allies take ground. And as the spring brings relief from the harsh winter, the northern Italian forces continue to maintain harsh resistance to any advance. Allied breakthroughs are met by swift moving walkers and Rift Tech equipped armor units. Southern Italian forces commit to a series of probing attacks along the formidable Gustav line of the northern forces, searching for the right springboard to launch their next offensive to break the line and push to liberate Rome. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time as I cover the Lord of the Black Pit short story from the Defiance Supplement. Please comment below with suggestions for future videos. Thank you.